Inside a funeral home shows Gilda Radner in a casket with a long line of people waiting to speak to her family. Shows Phil Hartman in a suit having just finished speaking to the family in line. Shows Chris Farley dressed as an angel talking to Jan Hooks and Norm MacDonald as Radner's mother and father. Farley. Oh, your daughter was such a sweetheart. Take it from me, an angel, that she's in a much better place now. Hooks. Thank you, Angel Rodney. Farley takes Hook's hand and begins to kiss it. He continues to kiss up her arm until he reaches her shoulder and then dips Hooks down for a kiss as he shoves his tongue down her mouth. After Farley lifts Hooks back up, he says, Just giving you a piece of heaven, doll. Hooks looks violated. Farley struts over to Hartman and says, Hey, Principal Tamdarian. Hartman. Angel Rodney, I think it's a bit inappropriate to shove your tongue down the mouth of a mother who just lost her daughter, a former student at our school. Farley, I know you told me she was a former student. I don't remember her, though. Hartman, are you kidding? Her name was Molly McKenna. She came to my office a month and a half ago complaining that you sexually assaulted her. Farley. Well, come on, buddy. I assault a lot of girls at the school. It's hard to keep track. McDonald and Hooks glance over at Farley and Hartman. Hartman walks Farley further away from them and says, Look, Angel Rodney, our Catholic high school, St. Bernard's, is very lucky to have literal angels, such as yourself, teaching at our school. But I'm starting to think that all of your sexual assaults on the female students is starting to take a toll. Farley, how you figure? Hartman, well, this is the third female student in the last month who has accused you of sexual assault who has ended up dead. Farley, and? Hartman, and? Angel Rodney, it's not good for the school if students who attend keep dying. Parents are going to end up sending their kids to our competitors like St. Louis or St. Barb's. Farley, well, you're the principal. I'm merely a biology teacher. I fail to see how this is my problem. Hartman, uh, far be it from me, a mere mortal, to tell an angel what to do. But I would humbly request you stop sexually assaulting the students, much less snuffing them out. Farley, listen, Principal Tanzarian, before God gave me the opportunity to come down here to earth, to teach these youngsters, I have been stuck up in heaven without any ass for thousands of years. What can I say? I'm horny as shit. Hartman. Well, be that as it may, Angel Rodney, couldn't you try to enjoy the female flesh from women who aren't students you're teaching at the school? Farley. That's easy for you to say. Did you know they don't even allow angels on those damn dating apps? Hartman, well, have you considered a lady of the night? Farley, you mean those female janitors who clean up the school after hours? Hartman, no, I mean a sex worker. Farley, well, gee, will it get you off my back? Hartman, it certainly would. Here, come with me. Hartman and Farley leave the funeral home and go into Hartman's Dodge Stratus. They drive away. Cuts to a seedy neighborhood where Hartman parks by an alley where they hear police sirens and gunshots. Hartman, okay, we should be able to find a sex worker here. Denitra Vance, as a sex worker, approaches the car and says, It's going to be 120 if I have to take care of both of you. Hartman, no, no, I'm okay. We're here just for my friend here. I hope it's not a problem that he's an angel. Vance, I've sucked off a lot of demons, but never an angel before. But that's okay. It shouldn't be a problem. Farley, what's your name, sugar tits? Vance, Charity. Farley, oh boy, I feel like giving Charity a lot of cum. Hartman, very good. Why don't I give you two the car and I'll wait outside? Hartman exits the car and Vance enters it. Farley lifts up his white gown, and Vance descends her face into his lap. 
Barley's halo begins spinning quickly as Vance bobs her head up and down. As Hartman looks at his phone outside his car, John Belushi approaches him as a bum and says, Jane, sir, Hartman, who do I look like, Barack Obama? Beat it, street urchin. Belushi takes out a pocket knife and says, well, I guess I'm going to have to get what I want the hard way then. A gunshot is heard inside the car. Belushi runs off. Hartman turns towards the car and sees Farley holding a gun with blood splattered all over the windshield. Hartman, Angel Rodney, what the hell happened? Farley, while Charity was going down on me, I wanted to see what it would look like if I shot her in the back of the head. And now my dick really hurts. And dead from the earth, we're not alive. It's Saturday, not alive, starring John Belushi, Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks, Norm MacDonald, Gilda Radner, Danitra Vance, and with many other special deceased contributors. Musical guest, Marie Carandini, and your host, Christopher Lee. Everybody, Christopher Lee. Applause, applause, applause. Lee. Thank you, thank you. I'm quite pleased to be here. I was an English actor with a career that spanned over 60 years. I often portrayed villains, including Dracula, who I portrayed nine separate times. I also played Francisco Scaramanga in the James Bond film The Man with the Golden Gun, Count Dooku in several Star Wars films, and Saruman in both the Lord of the Rings film trilogy and the Hobbit film trilogy. Applause, applause, applause. Lee. I also hosted SNL in its third season in 1978. I said then that I approached hosting SNL with considerable trepidation and dread. Because I had seen the show and admired it enormously, at times I even found it quite humorous. I said then that while I had been known for being in eerie films, I had not been in one in a while at that point, because at that point I was receiving scripts with titles such as The Creature from the Black Studies Program. Anyway, to this day, that still hasn't changed, as in my afterlife, I'm still receiving less than ideal scripts involving horror. Here are those coming attractions. Cuts to a screen that shows the title, Al Frankenstein. Shows Tom Davis over a long table with a body covered by a sheet. Davis. Now, for my most evil plot yet, I have created a monster. The dead monster, Al Franken. Stein. John Belushi is Al Frankenstein emerges from under the sheet and attacks Tom Davis while saying, I'm a former senator, writer, and now a monster. And gosh darn it, people like me. Cuts to a screen that shows the title Dark Side of the Moon. Shows Phil Hartman and Norm MacDonald as astronauts walking on the moon. Hartman. Well, we finally did it. We walked all the way to the dark side of the moon. McDonald, I can't believe it. I wonder what secrets we will find on this, the dark side of the moon. As they walk, they encounter a small hut. Denitra Vance emerges from the hut and yells, You white boys better beat it! The dark side is our side! Why don't you go back to the lily light side of the moon, you chalky cockies? Cuts to a screen that shows the title, Tales from the Creep. Shows Gilda Radner, Jan Hooks, and Chris Farley as mummies. Farley. Mummy! Radner and Hooks together. Yes, dear. Radner. Oh, why don't you handle this one? Hooks. Okay. What is it, dear? Farley. Why do all the other kids at school have a mummy and a daddy? And I have two mummies. 
cuts back to Lee on stage who says, now I'm sure you can see what I mean. Anyway, we have a great show tonight. Marie Tarandini, famed opera singer, and my great-grandmother is here. So get ready for Guy Mannering. We'll be right back. 